our our, our main guy closing it out. Our closing it out is uh, Holton Bugs. We who's excited for that? Who's excited for that? <laughs> Thank you guys. How are we doing? Y'all ready to rock and roll? Awesome, awesome. Well, guys, you know, f first of all, guys, if you don't mind, keep standing because uh, what they put together here, uh, just the entire team uh, of, of Leader Multiply, John Maxwell, it, it's been absolutely first class. And uh, with Meredith and, and, and Jamie and Nathan and everybody else, all the staff of everybody who's put this together, because these things don't just come together. Uh, it, it takes a lot of planning. Let's give them an incredible round of applause. First class. First class event. And, um, you know, I, I, I had a chance to talk with a couple of people in the back. And, uh, and I was talking with Meredith, and I said, you know, I had never met any of the speakers, ever. Ever. I had never met them before. Some of them I knew. Uh, but t yesterday and today was the first time I've ever met them. And typically when you get in an environment where you only have you've never met the people, the only thing you have in common is this network marketing business. And I can say because of the selection and the vetting process that you guys have gone through, I felt that there is a common connection with every person who got on the stage and who spoke outside of the industry of network marketing. And for me, that's what made this event first class. The facility is incredible. The telecast is, in, is, is awesome. Uh, but if you don't have the right people, okay, you don't have anything. So I give them another big round of applause for that. Awesome job. You guys have done a phenomenal job. And I, I appreciate all of you as well for staying. I know it's been a long uh, maybe two days. And I, I appreciate Jamie for giving me the last three hours uh, to close out. So, you know, I, I've, I've been in the back. You know, I was sitting there taking notes. And, and for the last hour and a half, I've been getting makeup done. So um, she told me, she says, man, you need a lot of stuff on that mug of yours, right? But, uh, but anyway, no, I, 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 am, I, I am. I'm very excited. I had a chance to finally uh, put uh, a, face and a, uh, a face with actually really some of my heroes. Um, I mean, our kickoff speaker that we had today who started off with the first law, um, Jason Bournet, I mean, this, this is honestly one of my childhood heroes in network marketing. I'll never forget. This is 22 years, 22 years. I've been sharing this guy's story, and he was an inspiration to me, and he didn't even know it, and we had a chance to meet for the very first time uh, yesterday, and so I'm just proud to even be in the association, and I watched him on stage, and I knew of him. He didn't know of me because I was sitting in the cheap seats while he had a chance to go across stage and speak, and I knew his whole story. It probably would have freaked him out if I told him all the things that I knew without even knowing him, right? <laughs> Uh, because I listened to his upline, and I listened to everything that was going on, and, and then having a chance to, to, to meet uh, uh, Steve and Pasha uh, uh, Carter, uh, I, I've known of them, and, and Pasha's brother, Chris, was one of my heroes in network marketing. I used to always hear this name, and I was like, wow. Every time I would hear this name, it was like, wow. I had a chance to meet and work with him for about five years, and, and just some of the best people that I've ever met, and then meeting them, I see why. Uh, and then every other person, I had a chance to meet Mark and, and Tammy for the first time and uh, didn't know who they were until they actually got introduced on stage. And we had a conversation in the back. And every other speaker uh, that, that's come through here, it, it's been absolutely phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. So I, I, I give my hats off to everybody who's had a chance to be here uh, and participate. This, I believe, is going to be one of the best things that our industry has ever been blessed with. How many of you agree to that? I agree with that. You know, uh, I, I before I got up, I got a, I received a text message. I'm sitting in the back in the green room, right? And I get this text message uh, from a buddy of mine. He says, "Hey man, I'm watching this thing on telecast. Can't wait till you get up there." He said, "But there's only one issue." I said, "What's the issue?" On text message, he says, "I can't tell if this is a network marketing event or a church <laughs> event." And um, you know, he's trying to get a little slick at the mouth, and I'm like, "Well, what's the difference?" Think about it. What, what, what's the difference, right? You know, I mean, there was a long time ago, about 2,000 years ago, a guy started an organization, right? And, 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 and what he did is he said, hey, listen, I'm going to go out, 
and build this organization, and, and he sent them off in twos, for those of you who work a binary. <laughs> Am I right? But there's some of you here who work at uni level, remember, he did go 12 wide. <laughs> Am I right? He sponsored 12, right? And, and he sponsored 12, and guess what? He even had somebody to quit. Oh my, God. he had somebody to quit. They quit. And, and what he did is he said, listen, what we'll do is this. Every week we're going to have an opportunity meeting. <laughs> Ours on Tuesdays and Thursdays back then, it started on Sundays. It still worked that way today, right? And, and, and then he says, well, I'll tell you what, because we want to grow this thing and these opportunity meetings are going real good, uh, we, we're going to make sure also at these opportunity meetings we, we, we pass out applications. And that's kind of the, the invitation that the pastor gives at the end. Come, come if you want to, you know, and then you join, right? And, and, and then they take them back, and you have somebody give them the orientation. We call it the getting started training. <laughs> Am I right? And, and when we get them started, then, then he's, you know, we said, okay, well, what we're going to do is take you through the getting started training, and then there's going to be a weekly training. They call it Bible study. Okay? Everybody in here's goals to get everybody on auto ship. They call it tithing. It's tithing, right? And you go through enough of those meetings, and every quarter what we have is a, a quarterly regional event, and they call them revivals, <laughs> right? And, and so what happened is this. All of us are building this organization, but the guy who started it 2,000 years ago has built the largest organization in the history of organizations. It's about a billion, 200 million people active. <laughs> am I right or am I right? So I told him, I don't know what the difference is. I just found out that it worked. It actually did work. And, uh, and, and so today with all the speakers, and for those of you who are, who are watching uh, from home, uh, number one, I applaud you as well. You've got some endurance as well. Uh, I applaud you as well. And I know this is going all over the entire world. And uh, I had a chance to talk with Nate. He was just telling me a little of the secrets of what's, what it's going to be in the future and stuff like that, a little bit of the vision. It's amazing that when you just take that little ripple, that little ripple effect of what happens from that first drop of how big it actually can get. But this wasn't a little drop. I think this was a boulder that was just dropped in the middle. And it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go out and multiply. Anybody ever heard that word? Multiply, right? It's going to multiply. Um, but anyway, I, I am. I'm honored that I was even given a phone call um, by, uh, by a good buddy of mine. And, uh, and he's up there, and he and his wife are up there, uh, Jeremy. And he called me up, and he texted me first, and he's like, because uh, he know I don't speak. I, don't, I, I just I don't like doing speaking engagements at all, I, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But he called me, he texted me up, he says, hey, man, listen, uh, hadn't heard from you in a while, but listen, he says, I know you don't speak. <laughs> okay? But uh, there's an opportunity, John Maxwell, yes, I'll do it. When is it? When should I book my calendar? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how it went, right? That's kind of how it went. And, uh, and, and so I'm honored to be here, obviously, to share a platform with uh, all of these great uh, leaders and speakers that we have and, and all of, and, and obviously, John Maxwell and the purpose uh, for which he's actually doing his business and doing what it is that he does. This, for me, is incredible. I, 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 I don't speak, uh, I don't like, I don't accept speaking engagements because that's, and I'm not against it. I'll be honest with you and tell you my biggest reason. I mean, and, and some of you won't believe this. You have to ask my wife right here to, 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 uh, to, to really validate this because she won't lie for, for me. She didn't even lie when the creditors used to call. <laughs> you know, I tell her, say, honey, tell him I'm not at home. She say, well, he told me to tell y'all he's not at home. <laughs> but anyway, um, but I, I honestly, I, I don't do it because... I don't, I don't like speaking. I'm, I, this is the, my, one of my biggest fears. One of my biggest fears is speaking in front of people. Still to this day, it's one of the biggest fears that I deal with. And people say, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And I'll tell you this, just because you're good at something doesn't mean that you're not afraid of it. Okay? And I, 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 I don't consider myself to be so great or good or, or whatever it is because I don't speak from... Uh, a plan. Um, I, I I watched everybody up here, and honestly, I was in awe. And I'm sitting there taking all of these notes. Yesterday, I took 14 pages of notes. Today, uh, I, I haven't even counted the number I, I took because I started taking notes on my phone because it said no 
photography, and I was taking notes and taking a picture of my notes yesterday. And, um, but I'm sitting up there, and I'm amazed at all of the different speakers who come up, and I'm watching them talk about how organized their life is. And I'm watching them talk about how they have a one, two, three, four, five step to success with this and how they get this together and how. And I'm sitting there like, am I just lucky that I that I made money in this? Because I'm like, I can't do what it is that they do. And so part of my message is for those of you who are sitting here saying, you know what? Uh, These people are incredible. But what about me? What about me? How, how can I get on the road to personal development? How can I grow my organization and change things up as well? How, how can I do that? And, and so my message is, is, is for you uh, as well because I didn't, I, I, if I had to have my life in order, if, if I had to wake up and knew exactly what I was going to do today, I'm not saying that's bad. I think it's great. I just can't do it. I, I, I can't do it. My brain doesn't learn that way. It never has learned that way. And so I figured out to be okay with me. I I figured out that, you know, this dude here was not a bad dude that, you know what, if you learn you and you master, you take you and then take this industry that we have here and, 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 and you can take this industry and you can weave a little bit of you, the best of you inside this industry, and you can still pull out some great results. And, and that's what we've been able to do. That's exactly what we've done. And so what I don't want you to do is I don't want any of you to get discouraged thinking, wow, you know what? I've got to be able to sit on a stool like John Maxwell and spit wisdom just out of thin air. <laughs> I, I, I can't do that either. And, and, and you don't have to be as, as smooth and as debonair as Jason was as he delivered, uh, uh, delivered his talk. And you don't have to have the confidence, and I'm, I'm missing the first name again, I'm sorry. Becky, Becky, and I'm standing up here, I'm like, Johnny's created a new law called the law of confidence, as she spoke. And, and, and I watch, and I watch one of the most important talks that I thought that was delivered today uh, by Jordan and Christian uh, Kemper. I, I watched them on the stage, and, and how many people would have the audacity to go out to 100,000 people and say, I cross-recruited. Right? Because, see, every, we're all sitting on these secrets in here, right? Everybody's got all these secrets that we're sitting on, and we try to get in this business, and guess what we want to do? We want to get on this stage, and here's the perfect me. If you be perfect like me, you can make money that work that way. We, we've been doing this now for a few years. 20, this year made my 20, my wife, my, my 26th anniversary in the business, in this industry. My wife got started with me, but it's only her 10th. Okay? 26 years we've been doing this, all right? And you guys know that my first seven years were, 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 were <laughs> um, interesting, okay? Any of you want to have tax write-offs? I had a lot of tax write-offs, okay? No profit zone, but a lot of tax write-offs. And I, and I think back and I wonder how and why was it the case? Why was it that 26 years ago I came to an opportunity meeting? Here I was, I'm a college student, and I was a freshman in college. I'm all excited about becoming the world's greatest engineer, all right? Because my mom told me, just like your mom told you, go to school, get a good, good education, get a good. How many of y'all know that's the biggest lie that's ever been told in America, right? But guess what? Most of us are still telling our kids, go to school, get a good education, get a good even though you know it doesn't work. I'm not here to put anybody's job down. I'm just saying that the expectations that we're giving our children and, and, the, and the plan that we give them to go out and achieve it, it's inconsistent, and it's already been proven that it's not going to give them what they want, and we still continue. We still continue. We still continue. We still continue. Okay? And, uh, and, and so my, my story, my, my thing was a little different. In my little time up here, you're probably going to notice I'll switch subjects because I've got this this is honestly this thing called ADD, all right? Uh, and, and it's like, you have to be ADD to be a top earner in, in the industry, you, you know? But I don't know, it is, it, it's ADD, I, you, know, um, you know, I call it awesome d- diamond developer. I don't know what they call it in the medical terms, but I am, I'm AD, how many of you ADD, right? So that's what I do, uh, that's what I do. So how did we get started? We got started, I went to an opportunity meeting, I was a college student, and I went, and i never forget, I wore my business suit. We're going to talk about growth. Uh, instead of three hours, I need 
the next three weeks to talk about my growth because when I went in my business suit, I never forget, I used to wear my tags on my suit here, you know, the little, because it was silk threading and I thought the suit was expensive because it was silk threading and I'm like, this can't be removed, this must be there. That's where I was. My pants, I wear them like this. My tie, the skinny part of my tie was down. The fat part of my tie was up. Never knew how to tie a tie. Nobody in my family ever had a corporate job. Everybody in my family, my wife's family, they all had their names on a shirt when they went to work. I thought that maybe they forgot what their name was, but it was those name badges, you know, the patches that you wear in the blue collar world. That was my family. So we never wore any ties. And that was how we got started. And I never forget seeing the guy spin the circles. He was a retired pharmacist. And all of these people walked across the stage talking about, I used to be this. I'm a retired this. And I'm sitting there like, I can't believe it. Why has nobody in the world taught me about this way to make money? This is a secret society. It's something <laughs> because I had never heard of network marketing. And I wasn't one that needed a follow up. I got in. I got in. And I never forget that was September of 1990. And since that time, I have never, ever, ever, I'm sorry, last year, and I'll explain why. I've never missed an event in 26 years except last year. Why? Because of one of the reasons that we got started to build this business, and that was choices and to take care of family. We had a situation, got a phone call, had family members, and it was a, a situation going on in our family that was actually beyond one of the parents' control, but the other parent was, was, it was just different. And here it is, my little niece and my little nephew. The state wants to take them on, and we're like, uh-uh, not, not when you got Uncle Holton and Auntie Earlene. And so we did what we had to do. We missed the event in Mexico, and we went and got, got them, and they took custody of them and, and all of that kind of stuff because of network marketing, because of the freedom that we have. And so that's the only event that we've ever, that we've ever missed. And she was with me. She has been with me our first four years. There wasn't a one-on-one, -on -one, two on one, or a house meeting that I ever did that she wasn't there. So people see her right now. She just walks around and she floats. She floats around right now. When she comes into the room, she floats, right? And so everybody says, oh, she's just a nice, pretty face. But every meeting, Every first four years of Network Mart, every meeting, if I was going to a gas station to show the plan, we would dress up in our suit. She'd put on her dress at a gas station. Jason knows what I'm talking about. And, and she'd be there with me every single meeting. OK. And, and so uh, that was where we got started. But we, we didn't make any money for seven years. Why didn't we make any money? Uh, because our level of personal growth at that time on a scale of one to ten, I had never heard of personal growth. No, I'm, I'm, th that's not even a joke. I mean, that's, I had never heard of personal growth. I'm like, personal growth? What is that? Okay, you know, I just didn't know what that was. And, and so what, what, what happened is, is we, ha we ended up, you know, uh, having some challenges. Uh, one of our biggest challenges was, like, making the business work. So in the first seven years, uh, my total organization was about, uh, I think it was about 49 people. Uh, now, all 49 weren't active at the same time. I think the most we've ever had active was about six or eight, maybe eight people, because I did take six groups, six legs to a function one time. They didn't have anybody sponsored. But we had 49 people over a seven-year period of time combined. This is cumulative. This is not 49 this year. For, no, this is total after seven years. That was who, that's where we were. And, 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 and I would still stay there, and I would go, and I was just as fired up year Five as I was year one, and, 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 and it, was, it was exciting for us because we saw something that we believed that we can do. And I was afraid to stand in front of a room, and I was afraid to walk up to a person and shake their hand and say, hey, how you doing? My name's so I, I couldn't do that. I, I, I just, I, I, would, I would shake in my pants. You say, why? Because of there were some things that took place with me that, that happened that I got to explain to you um, so that you'll understand what, what really is the was my process. Um, I, I grew up and, and, and had a great childhood. I love, you know, my mom and my dad and Erlene's mom, and we had a great loving family, but there were some things that they did that just kind of messed us up. Anybody here ever felt like you messed up? Raise your hands. If you didn't raise your hand, that lets me further know how messed up you are because you don't think you messed up. <laughs> okay, all of you messed up. I'm messed up, like big time messed up, right? And so, uh, and so my mom would say things to me, and I didn't know what was going on. And this is why you got to be very careful what you say 
to your group. Very careful what you say to prospects. Very careful what you say to your children because the subconscious mind doesn't know how to differentiate fiction from nonfiction. It doesn't know. It does not know whatsoever. It only knows a suggestion that's actually been given. And when it's given over and over and over again, it goes down and gets deposited and it starts to form a, a reality. And my mom, I never forget, she'd always tell me things like, boy, shut up. You got a big mouth. Don't talk outside of my house. Be quiet when you hear adults talking. And every time she would say that, I thought she was making me respect authority. I thought she was making me respect my elders. I thought she was making sure that secrets didn't go out of my house. She didn't know it. I didn't know it. But she was killing that self-image. And all of these years for, for maybe what? You know, 18 years or whatever it was, <clears throat> I would get that over and 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 over. And so, at some point in time, I, I, I didn't even think my name was Holson. I thought it was Big Mouth. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. See, the thing about our industry is we want to just tell the glory stuff. I was, I was so grateful that that you got up and talked about how hard this business is. I, when I do me, I never tell, oh, just get in. You seven to ten hours, you can make a real nice six-figure income. Hogwash, you can't do it. You, you, you can't do it. You can't even do that in the lottery playing part-time. You got to be a full-time lottery player. You can't. Stop making this off for people because you, you make their expectations, you know, mismanage their expectations, and, then, and, and that's why... Uh, the MLM graveyard is so big because you mismanage the expectations. I tell them, I say, this may be one of the hardest things you'll ever do, but it'll be the most worth it thing that you'll ever do. It'll be the most worth it thing that you'll ever do. Okay? And, and, and so, so here I was, my mom's calling. I never forget, I have all these things that's going on. Mom and family, great, great family, I don't feel like I don't think that I was abused. I wasn't an abused child. I never reported it. So <laughs> there's no record, okay? There's no record. So what happened was this here. So I never forget, I was in the uh, eighth grade, ninth grade. And so here I was. I, I am popular in school because I'm a football player, right? So I'm popular in school, and then I go to the ninth grade. And the ninth grade at the time was, was not like a high school center. It was eighth and ninth grade school. And I became, I was the vice president of student advisory committee. And, and I was the vice president. Why? Because I didn't want to be a leader, couldn't be president, didn't even want to run for president. But my popularity, hey, Holton, you should be in this. And, and they wanted me to say, you got to get involved in these activities if you want to get a scholarship and all this stuff. So I become the vice president, right? I became the VP, and here's what happened. One time, the president missed school. And, and, and that was like a holiday. It was some kind of holiday that they were recognizing called Brotherhood, Sisterhood Day. And so on that day, the president was supposed to give a speech. Jamie, I want to make sure I'm okay because I don't think that was right when I got up here. The timer, I just, is, oh, are we good? Oh, I want to respect that, okay? So you just pour coffee or hot water or something, just throw it up here and I'll stop, all right? But anyway, I just want to make sure. Um, and so what happened is this here. So it, he, he, he missed school. I'm like, this dude misses school today and who's got to take over? VP. Right? They call me on the I never, Holton, could you come to the office? I'm like, what did I do now? All right? And so I went to the office. I'm afraid and I'm scared because I'm like, you know, what? I was a mischievous little kid. So I'm like, what did I do now? So I go there. So they say, hey, listen, the president didn't show up today. Uh, no problem. They say, well, today's Brotherhood Sisterhood Day. Okay, no problem. They say, well, he was supposed to give a speech. I say, no problem. They say, you're the vice president. I say, no problem. And then they say, well, you got to take his place. I say, big problem. I ain't giving no speech. Uh-uh. No, no, it ain't happening. Not doing it. I'm sorry. I didn't sign up for this. I'm the vice president. I'll give the vice speech. That's the president's speech. I'll give the vice speech. And he talked me into it. He said, listen, he said, all you got to do is stand here on the intercom. Nobody can see you. I said, but can they hear me? He said, yeah, they can hear you, but they can't see you. 
And so after a little personal growth session that he had with me, my, my emotions got up and I said, okay, I'll do it. And, and, and I'll never forget, I delivered it. And I, 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 all I had to do was read the speech was a big problem. I'm a very slow reader. I'm still trying to finish a couple of John's books that I started. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm, <laughs> I've gotten through some chapters, but I haven't finished the books yet, all right? Now, so here it is. So I, I'm, I, I'm up here, and this is what's going on. I'm reading the speech, and they gave me the speech. They gave me, a, you know, a, a little while to kind of practice it. And I delivered it, and you know what? See, when you go out and when you do what you're afraid of, your, you, your chest pumps out. You're, you stand 10 feet taller. You're, you're, I mean, when you go out and you prospect that person that you were afraid of, and you call that doctor, or you call your attorney, or you go out and, and prospect whoever, you start feeling like this, especially when they get in. And here it is. I do the speech. I get through it, and I didn't die. I might have uh, John Maxwell who, you know? <laughs> Les Brown who? <laughs> so I'm thinking, my chest is, I'm, so, I'm fired up. And when I walked out of the office, walking through the office, some of the faculty members was giving me a thumbs up. Great job. And I'm thinking, awesome job. And then so I couldn't wait to get out in the hallway where all my friends were so they can see the guy who delivered the greatest thing. Since Martin Luther King did, I have a dream, right? I'm like, I'm the next MLK, baby. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get, I'm telling you, right? So here it is. So I, I, I walk out, and, and I'll never forget, going through the hallway. I'm walking through the hallway, and I'm walking tall but slow. You want to walk slow because you want to make sure, you know. So I'm walking real slow, and, and, and they laugh at me. <laughs> and I'm like, what are they laughing at? And they say, you didn't hear what you said? I'm like, no. They say, every time you were supposed to say brotherhood, sisterhood, you said brotherhood, sister would. <laughs> and just like all of you, they laughed and they laughed and they laughed and they laughed and they laughed. And, they, and then here's my self-image. I'm now from Martin Luther King, and I'm way down here, all the way down, up almost as low as a pregnant aunt. <laughs> and I'm wondering, I ain't doing that no more. I made a fool of myself. I should listen to my mom. I got a big mouth. I need, to talk, I need to talk when I'm on to talk to. I had no business getting on that microphone. And I went back into personal recession, not personal growth, failure. They laughed. And that's where I was. So when I got involved in this business, that was my mindset. They're going to laugh at me. They're going to talk at me. They're going to say all this kind of stuff about me. And I was afraid. And still to this day, the fear is always there. You never eliminate fear. You only gain courage. You only gain courage. And so what happened was I, I, I wanted to find, okay, what do I need to do? I've got to learn how to grow. I've got to be able to grow, and, and I've got to be able to make this thing really work for me. And for seven years, I never did it, but I read books like crazy. And, and, and I went to an event one day, and I'll never forget the speaker was talking to me, and, 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 and he, was, he was really talking about how he used to live and how he was and how he lives now, and, and, and he talked about books, tapes, and events, books, tapes, and events, personal development. And I'm sitting down in the front row, and I'm eating it up because I had never heard this stuff before. And so I'll never forget, I went out, and, and, and I start grabbing books, and I start reading books. And, and, and then I became a voracious tape consumer. Why? I read slow, but I listen at the same speed that the tape goes. <laughs> so I was real smart. I'm like, I can get more information if I put it on tape, right? Because my reading is like, you ever heard of tape? When it gets garbled, sorry. that's how I read in terms of that speed. So I start listening to these tapes. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you this. Some of you say, oh, man, you do so well and you're so great. A great success story. I told you, seven years, I never made more than 500 bucks. Never, ever. And I made 500 only three separate times, three separate months. All of them were promotions that me and three people bought a big product, and I made a $500 check. <laughs> but I had to pay out about $250 of that $500 check, so I had a $250 profit, and the event was coming up that was 300 bucks, so I lost 50 bucks for actually making 500 bucks. <laughs> Some of y'all good at math, you'll get that. 
And so what happened was I start reading and then I start listening to tapes and I start growing and I start hearing things that I had never heard before. And I start hearing speakers say, say certain things and, and I would get these tapes and, and, and I would devour them. If I had a philosophy, if I was driving, I was going to be listening. If I was sitting, I was going to be reading. You go to my bathroom that we had, we had one bathroom and, and, and I, uh, you know, sit there and close the door and there was a sign right there. I was reading affirmations. If you got to go. Go diamond is what it said. And I had to go. <laughs> right? And I was reading. And I'd have affirmations because I'd learned this stuff. And when my sun visor, I couldn't wait for the sun to come out. I'd take that sun visor, put it down, and there it was. And it'd have my goals there. People follow me easily and effortlessly. Everywhere I go, I'm a people magnet. People can't wait for me to come into the room. Money follows me easily and effortlessly. Successful people are always calling me to personally sponsor them into my business. And I would read that at every single stoplight, and I'd be talking to myself, and the people would be coming next to me, pulling up, and, and I'm over there talking to myself, and I'm having a great time. And I was like, Jake, no radio, no television. And I'm up there talking. They look at me, he's crazy. <laughs> he's crazy. And I just kept talking. It didn't matter. And I start growing, and then I start growing some more. It got to a point where I'd take my tapes, and, and my wife, you know, we, we, we were young in marriage at that time, kind of like Jordan and, and, and Kristen was, right? We were young in marriage, right? We ain't perfect. I'll let y'all know that. We walk in, everything's you know, looks all perfect. But we do have some high-volume, low-PV conversations. I, I promise you that, okay? <laughs> Not a lot of volume going on, but a lot of volume, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so... But we, 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 we would, so she like, why are you still listening to the tapes? And so I went out, Radio Shack, and I bought me a pillow speaker. And I bought that little disc. It was a disc speaker like this. You put it up under a pillow. I learned that that voice was nothing more than vibrations. And the vibrations would go through the pillow. I can hear them in my eardrums just like it was had a headset on. She couldn't hear a thing. And what I learned was this. I'm a slow reader fast listener. I'm going to sleep for six hours. I'm going to get personally developed for six hours. There was a period of time in my life, guys, let me share with you, because some of you look, man, your results are great. Just, I ain't that great. I, I'm, and I don't say that to be humble. I'm just being real with you. I look at these talents that people have and all this stuff and putting PowerPoints together. I'm, I, would, like, I probably will spontaneously combust if I had to put a PowerPoint together. <laughs> I'm serious. And, and I, there was a period in my life, I promise you, this is what I want you to get. Okay? Many of you, you want the result, but what I did was this. I listened to more personal development, I believe, than probably any other person on earth. That's my belief. I wasn't in com competition with anybody. I wasn't looking at anybody, what else that they were doing, but, but if I was sleeping, I was listening. It was almost 20 hours a day. I never forget, I took a job throwing newspapers for the Wall Street Journal, 3 o'clock in the morning. People say, man, you doing that? Yeah, you have no idea what tape I listened to last night because it's me and me in the newspapers. And I got fed, and I got fed, and I got fed, and I got fed, and I got fed. And what was happening is I was changing. I was growing. I was growing. I was changing my belief system. The belief system was changing. And all of that stuff and that, 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 that yuck that was up in there was transforming. And as it was transforming, my results or my actions started to pick up. And, and so what are the actions? And so I start working the business. And now what happened is I go out, show the plan, and go out and talk to people. And it was amazing. Now my numbers started to improve. I can have a conversation and look them directly in the eye. And it, you know what? They start to show up a little bit more. I'll tell you this right here. When you start to grow, I want you to understand, because I'm condensing this here. I want you to understand that death is just as important of the growth process as growth is. Because some of you are only looking for growth. You're only looking for growth. And what happened was this. A lot of my habits died off. A lot of the bad habits, they died away. Golf at that time was an income reducer. It died away. I didn't have, a ch I didn't have time. Television and all of the other stuff, it died away. And I start planting. I start doing the work. First thing I worked on was what? My belief system. I'm talking to you right now as I close out about how I raise the bar and how you can raise the bar. First thing is I worked on my belief system. My belief system. My paradigm, what I thought about certain things. I didn't understand. I didn't have a success vocabulary. 
I eliminated, and I, a lot of the words that I used that were income reducing started to die. They needed to die. And what was born? New words like I can, I will, certainty was born. And then I started to work some more because if you're going to grow, you got to do the work, you got to plan. So after your belief comes your actions, put the work in place. And I started to plant those seeds, and, and I was out, and I knew I had mastered the art of this. And once I did that, I never worried again about money in my life, ever. I didn't worry about growing an organization. I didn't worry about whether somebody was going to quit. Why? I'm a grower. I'm a leader. I'm a planter, and I would plant, and I'd plant some seeds, and, 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 and some of them would start to grow. But then I'd also see some of them die. One of my houses that we have, we got two palm trees in the front. Earlene and I bought them when we first got started. When we first bought the house, they were five feet tall. They were $5,000 a, a, a piece because they were $1,000 a foot. We didn't know that. Now they're about 15 feet, maybe 20 feet tall, so they're worth about 40 grand. And what I noticed is every summer, uh, the, the largest frond on that palm, on these date palms, the largest fronds, they, they blossom out, and, 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 and they look so great. And people come by, and they marvel over them, and they get the most attention, and they're the strongest. They make the tree look most attractive. Why? Because they have been growing. I also learned that everything that grows with you won't stay with you. Some of you had some people quit. I was talking to somebody in the back, had a leader quit. I heard the young lady say she had a leader that didn't wake up. And I understand some of those things. And those fronds was looking so great. And what happened was this here. I noticed that the fronds start pointing in another direction. Why? Because it was getting all the attention for a while. And then it sprouted out like this. And then it went a little like that, got a little older. And as soon as it started to muffle over like that, what I saw? was this needle-like thing that came up in the center of my palm tree headed 90 degrees north. I didn't know what it was the first time. I'm wondering, what's going on? Is that a needle? As that frond, which was the biggest, your leader, which is the most profitable, was dying off, new leadership was being born. Because I kept feeding that organization. And the next thing you know, that thing grew up about four and a half feet, and it became bigger than the last one. I had an experience, a loss. Uh, you know, we, we, we all have quitters or people that just don't continue the journey. And, and, and it reminded me of my palm tree when I had someone to quit recently, someone who had been there for a while. And guess what happened? We had an event, brought a new person to the event. And from the time of that event until one month, one month, the person who was new, that new needle, put more people in the organization, non-networker, than the quitter who had been in for six and seven years. Why? Because we kept planting. So what I'm telling you is that death is going to take place, but your job is to keep planting. And I promise you it will keep growing. Your work, your activity is something that you've got to do. Last thing I'll, I'll cover is this here. It's the R. Belief. You got to have the belief, A, you got to have the actions. If you control the belief and alter the belief towards where it is that you want to go, your actions will change. You show me somebody who's got what beliefs about their upline, their actions about their upline are going to change. You show me somebody who's got what beliefs about the company, their actions are going to change. Why? Because it all starts with the thinking and then the conversations that take place. We all know it. That's why we say be careful what it is that you say because you're going to get it. Ah, my company don't pay no attention to me. Well, they're not because you're going to bring it home. This ain't the right company. I don't know if you're going to be gone. You talk yourself into it. 70% of all the conversations that ever have taken place with you is between you and you. <laughs> Internal communication. And when you do those things and you go out, whatever your product is, whatever your service is, whatever your business model is, it doesn't matter. No, well, I'm looking for this type of product. None of that stuff matters. There's only 100 pennies in the dollar, and the company can't pay out 101. They can't. You work where it is that you are. You do what it is that you do. You follow the leadership that's in your organization that, that has already set the trends and set the example. 
And then what you're going to notice is the results will pay off. And nobody knows the time frame in which they're going to pay off. Nobody knows. I didn't know. You thought that my success was going to be 18 years later? You thought that that's what I was thinking? Yeah, honey, we're going to get started in this thing. I'm going to make sure you do your own hairdos. I'm going to make sure that we shop at the Goodwill. Because 18 years from now, (laughs) you're going to be able to buy some stuff that you want to buy. No. No. I thought it was right away. We don't know the timetable. And so I worked and we worked and we worked and I want you to work and you work and you work. And then, and then as you believe and you change, as you start reading and all of these different books and resources that we have now, you get that. You develop those mental resources and those mental biceps. You get them and you exercise them and you grow them until they become huge. Okay? You want to make your mental biceps look like Mike Sims over there, right? You see Mike Sims, you're like, that's a big dude over there. I'm like, I want to be around him, okay? You know, it's something break off, if you know what I'm talking about, right? So <laughs> I just want him around me. Nobody, him, all right? Now, so you do that, and then the results will start to show. And what happens is this. Sometimes you'll get a little splash of a result. Keep, keep working. Keep planting. Keep planting. Don't stop. It's like you pumping a pump in the desert. You're out there, and you're pumping this hammer. They say, well, if you pump, there is water down there. You start pumping, and you pump, and you pump. And next thing you know, it, it ain't working. I don't believe there's no water down there. In that well. Hello, 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 hello. Ain't no water. But then some people are going to be consistent, and they'll keep, they'll keep pumping, and they'll keep pumping. You're talking about the law of growth, and sometimes your right arm is going to get a little tired. Just switch arms. Okay? And you keep pumping. That's all we did. 26 years now. We kept pumping. And what happened is we looked at our hands, and I'm like, calluses, because we worked. Callous. What are the calluses? The hurt feelings, the disappointments, the no's, the people who quit on you, the people who disappointed you, all of the returns or whatever happened. And, and then what I learned about the law of growth is God will give you new hands. When the skin goes away, stronger hands come back, and then you can pump a little longer. Now you know it's okay if I get calluses. Those were baby calluses. The calluses that I had back in 1991 ain't nothing. They, I don't even, I can't even notice them if they ever came back. Why? Well, I got 2016 calluses. And I keep pumping. And then you, what you're going to have is this. Here's the result. You're going to have a little spurt. And what most people do, here's the mistake. I made it rich. You celebrate, right? You celebrate, and you want all of the pins and the recognition and all of this stuff, and, and, and you made it. I made it. And you take your hand off the pump because you can't celebrate and pump at the same time. You can't. And so what you do is you get back pumping. You get back pumping, and you get back pumping. And this is all we did, guys. I got back pumping. I got back. Why? Because I knew. I knew there was water down in that well. I knew it. And I pumped. And I pump, and I switch hands, and I switch hands. Sometimes I say, huh, it's your turn. But don't stop pumping. Don't stop pumping. Don't stop pumping. Come on, come on, come on. She'll pump a little, and then I go over here, and I'll pump a little bit. And I'll pump, and the next thing, another little goose comes out. Okay, no problem. Why don't you just pay off, pay off that little car? Just pay the car off, okay? Pay the car. Keep pumping, though, because that ain't lifestyle money. Heard the young lady talk about financial resources. I mean, Brad talked about that. What you do with your money. You pump, you pump, you pump, you pump, you pump. Got an, okay, we can quit our jobs now. Why? Because we got about a year's worth of money set aside. We ain't betting on if come. If I hit this pen, I'll be able to afford these bills I have today. No. And so you keep pumping, and you keep pumping, and you keep pumping. Now you're full time. Full time. And you keep pumping, and, and a little bit more water. Go, and then now it's going to start to drip out. So now it's a continuous flow. Why? You got enough people on your auto ship that you got flow, cash flow. It's coming out. A little bit of results. Don't get the big head. Don't believe your own press. Don't think you're as good as you are because let me share something with you. I tell my group all the time, I am not anywhere as near as good as my income. Trust me on that. I am not that good because I would have been making it my previous company. I ain't that good. No. So I kept pumping. And then the little flow that was coming out, and then a little bit more started coming out. Because I kept pumping. I kept priming that pump. And the next thing you know, it started coming out a little bit more. And I had this reservoir that was about this big around circumference. And then next thing you know, because I kept pumping and I didn't stop, 
it start coming out and it start gushing out and we didn't even have enough buckets. We tried, we, we were like, huh, get it, get it, get it. And we, we go get a bathtub or get something, put it in a swimming pool or do something, put it over here. And those results start coming and they kept coming and the results kept coming and they kept coming and we kept pumping. And then what happened when it comes out like that, after a while, it may take years. We walk away from the pump. But the reservoir and the pressure that you've built up keeps the flow going. You ain't got to work as hard. I call it the law of decreasing responsibility. In the very beginning, in the very beginning, I pumped and I worked the hardest and I made the least amount of money. Now, before, pump the least, make the most money. What are the results? <clears throat> Here's the results. It's not just the money, but we in this for money. So I don't apologize for being rich. I don't. I'm just being candid. I didn't get in to help people. I got in to make some money. Now I develop people. But when I got in, I didn't get in to help nobody. I'm just being, that's me. I'm not, I'm just saying, I'm not, uh, no, we're going to help. No, no, we're going to make some money. <laughs> so I'm just, I keep it real. So here's the results. The results is this. You start to start seeing the results. Start, start, start having a little bit more. You start buying yourself some freedoms. You start seeing different people in your life start to change. You start seeing your, your family, and you, 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 here, here's the results. You, you go to, to a place and where your mom had a dream home, never lived in a house in her whole life, never owned a house. And she had a dream to buy this house, and it was already fully mo- it was a model. And you bring her home one day after you make sure your mother-in-law takes her out shopping for somebody else's house. So she was happy to go help somebody else. And you bring her back home, and you have 72 family members sitting in. And when she opens the door, after thinking, oh, our cousin bought this house, she's like, oh, well, this is the house. I'm I'm so glad somebody in the family got it. And she opens the door, and everybody says, welcome home. And she bawls. I ain't talking about the income. You can't buy that experience. You take your dad to a restaurant. For his birthday. And at the end of the restaurant, he pulled up in some car. But we all walk out, and there's a brand new Corvette Stingray and a sign that says, Happy Birthday, Dad. And to see for the first time him run and cry at the same time. (laughs) Those are the results. To have your mother-in-law not have a care in the world and to do the same thing, and she would pull up, and she comes out of the restaurant, and the next thing you know, she, you know, my wife had bought her a purse, nice purse, and put like ten thousand dollars in cash in the purse, and then she walks out and see her car, and she throws the purse as she runs to the car, <laughs> screaming. We have it on video. <laughs> it's it's worth every dollar that we've ever earned. To be able to look at your home and. And take your son and your wife, you know, just on a little vacation out over there in San Diego. And they say, well, instead of coming back, renting a house, why don't we buy one? And then you, because you got extra, that well is still gushing out. You just buy one. Okay? And then you buy four other ones. That's not, I'm just telling you what some of the results are when you keep your hand on the pump handle. And to be mortgage free. To be able to take your wife and, and, and say, hey, listen, we're going to build a recreation center. So we built this, re- we bought a building. So we're going to build a recreation center for all the distributors, family to be able to come and recreate. It was 19,000 square foot recreation center. And we totaled it out, remodeled it. Now it's 30,000 square feet. It's four stories. It's got a bowling alley in the recreation center. It's got barber shop in the recreation center. It's got spas in the recreation center. It's it's got 21 televisions because I gave up TV in the recreation center. 21 televisions in this recreation center. It's got two elevators for people to be able to go up and down the recreation center and do whatever it is that they want. And then it's it's got a shopping area, a boutique, 3,600 square feet, recreation center, completely custom, private elevator goes up to it. 
It's got heated floors in the bathrooms. Why? Because it gets cold two days out of the year in Houston, Texas. <laughs> and, and, and to fund it all from that fountain, but to take that recreation center, but place it in a gated community called your neighborhood and call it home. What's our secret? Here's our secret. I'm going to tell you what our secret is. Every year, my wife and I, this is what we do. This is our, you want to know what our secret is? There's a bank account that we have that nobody knows about. It's how we pay for all of this stuff. Every day, we, get a, we, we make it an intention, law of intentionality, to make sure we impact somebody's life. In some small way or big way, it doesn't matter. We don't look for a return. We don't ask for any return. We take at least one month out of the year that we do every single day. Some of you follow and seen in December, it's our month, that every day there's going to be a major tip or major contribution that's made to somebody, and we can't stay and watch their reaction. We can't. We don't want no credit for it. We don't even want them to know who we are. Walk into a restaurant during the busiest time, not when it's empty. Big restaurant, walk in at the busiest time and get with the manager and say, hey, I need you to help me out. What can I help you with, sir? I need you to help me fill up my account. How can I do that? Could you please do me a favor? Don't let anybody know I'm here. But every person in this restaurant, grab all of their tabs and here, put it on this card. Hold on, hold on for a second. No, no, don't, don't clap yet because this is done. I'm done. Because I, do, I don't do it for the phrase. I'm telling you what our secret is. And the people looking around and, oh, what, who, who, who did it? I, oh, this is on my company. This is a business lunch, and they're going to mess up my tax, for my tax refund. Oh, what? And we just, I just sit there in my little T-shirt because they don't think it's me. And I just eat my, eat my meal, and, and I'm just excited. To be able to take a waitress and tip her more than she's going to make for the entire month. And then to come to find out she had three kids and Christmas wasn't going to be Christmas unless that happened. We didn't find out till the next year. They would go into a store and just say, hey, listen, what are the layaways here? Let me, give me those layaways. Because we used to put the stuff on layaway. And, and so what happened is this. You do enough of that stuff. You do it every day. Every day. To see our pastor preaching his heart out. I brought my pastor and my first lady here because I wanted them to experience this. They're not networking, but they are. Remember I told you the other part of networking? <laughs> to see him preaching and to go into the children's church and notice that there's, there's uh, no AC. And in our house that we just built, I think we got 14 AC units. I said, if I got 14 and you don't have none, I shouldn't have any. And be able to say, hey, look, we're going to use my people. Don't use no cheap people, my people. And what happens is every time we do that, this is what happens. I think what God does is this. He starts putting away in that account, tucking it away in that account. And so every time I go out to do a process, this is why I'm not that good. I go out and shake a hand, but because I got some in that reservoir, he makes sure it's the right person's hand I shake. See, when I go out and I show the plan, he, he makes sure it's the right person. I don't sell the business. I don't convince anybody. I just keep doing what I'm doing every day, every day. I don't want no credit for it. I don't, I don't look for any recognition for it whatsoever. And, and I just go out and keep pumping that handle. And whoever's there, I just know he's going to put that right person there. So if you want to know what our secret is, it ain't that we're that great. It ain't that I'm that personally developed. Our big secret my secret weapon is this woman right here who's been with me for 23, 23 years in marriage. Next month, 30 years we've been together. Ever since I was 31 years, we've been together since I was 13. She was 12. It's the truth. And if you do that and focus a little on that and maybe, a little, maybe 2% less on all of those great MLM skills that nobody has perfected, that doesn't really work. You do that. Watch what happens. 
to your reservoir. I want to thank each and every one of you. I want to thank again this entire organization for allowing me to come and share my gift again uh, and to be a part of this amazing, amazing, amazing event. And uh, I want to bring up uh, this gentleman who I know has worked tirelessly to put it all together and hearing the philosophies of what they put together and why they want to do this. Six, $20 for a John Maxwell session. Per session? Come on. I know where their hearts are. And that's why I'm grateful to be a part of it. So, guys, give a big round of applause, stand ovation for Mr. Jamie Minton. I got this feeling.